So now we're going to discuss omitted variable bias and the relationship between the short regression and the long regression. And the setup is really simple. Let's just use two variables and let's just say that the true regression of y on the x's is given by this equation that we have right here. So we have x1 and x2 and let's just say that these are the only two x's that determine y just for simplicity. And additionally, let's assume that x1 is uncorrelated with the error term, which what this is saying is that if we were to include x2, then we would have no problem for estimating beta 1, right? Because x1 is not correlated with the error term. And this is what we sometimes call the long regression, which is the one that includes all the variables that are relevant for determining y. But suppose that for some reason, either because we don't have the data or because we're ignorant, we just don't include x2. So instead of running this long regression, we run what we call the short regression, which is we run y only on x1. And let's just call the error term here vi, where vi is going to contain not only this ui, the error term from the long regression, but it's also going to contain beta 2 x2i because we are omitting x2 you know so this beta 2 x2i is going to be contained in this vi and this is what we call the short regression and the question that we want to ask now is like if we run this regression the short regression what is beta 1 estimating and to see what's going on here let's just write down the formula for what beta 1 from the short regression is equal to and we know this because we know what a beta 1 is from a bivariate regression, right? It's just going to be the covariance between x, in this case it's x1, and y divided by the variance of x1, right? And just to see what this implies, now that we have omitted x2, let me just write this as short regression because it's this one, you know, and this one we're going to call it the one from the long regression. So just to see what's going on, let's plug in for the long regression, which is the true relationship between y and the x's. And we, let's just plug that in here, you know. So this long regression, we're going to plug in here. And let's see what we get. So this beta 1 from the short regression is just going to be the covariance between x1 and beta naught plus the beta 1 from the long regression, x1i plus beta 2 x 2 i plus u i and we have to divide everything by the variance of x1 and now all that we have to do is let's just apply the properties of the covariance that we can distribute this over the summation and we can take the covariance between each of these terms and also we can extract the scalars right remember like the covariance of x and 2y is 2 times the covariance of x and y. So let's just apply all of that stuff and we're going to get that. First, the covariance between x1 and beta naught is going to be 0. So then we're going to have the beta 1 from the long regression times the covariance between x1i and x1i. And then we're going to have the covariance between x1 and beta 2 x2i we again extract the beta 2 out and we're going to have the covariance between x1i and x2i and then finally we're going to have the covariance of x1i and ui and all of this has to be divided by the variance of x1i let me just divide each term to make it shorter and so this is going to be divided by the variance of x1i again here and again here. So let's just note a couple of things here. So first, we said that the covariance between x1 and the error term was zero. Because again, what we were trying to capture is like if we included x2, then there was no problem. X1 wasn't correlated with other stuff, you know, in, in the error term. So all of this is going to be equal to zero, right? So this term cancels out, which is going to simplify a lot. Then we had this other thing. We have the covariance 
of x1 with itself. Now remember that always the covariance of a variable with itself is just the variance of that variable. So this numerator here is just the variance of x1. And the variance of x1 is divided by the variance of x1, so all of this number is just going to be equal to 1. So this is all going to be equal to 1. So this formula for the beta 1 from the short regression just boils down to this being equal to the beta 1 from the long regression plus beta 2 times the covariance between x1 and x2 divided by the variance of x1. And this is the formula for the relationship between the short regression and the long regression. So notice one thing here. So ideally, we would want the beta 1 from the short regression to be exactly the same as the 1 from the long regression, right? Because that would say that it's okay to omit x2, right? So when is that the case? From when looking at this, we have to have that this second term right here is equal to zero. So for beta one from the short regression to be equal to the beta one from the long regression, what we need is for this second term to be equal to zero. And notice that this is the case if either beta two is equal to zero or the covariance between x one and x two is equal to zero. And what do these things mean? So if beta two is equal to zero, it means that x2 is irrelevant for explaining y. And that's why we can omit x2. You know? So if we're concerned that when we're omitting one variable, we're creating all sorts of biases. Well, if the variable that we are omitting has no relationship with y whatsoever, then it's okay to omit it. The other case is when x1 and x2 have a covariance of zero, which basically means x1 and x2 are uncorrelated. And of course, in this case, it's okay to omit x2 to understand the effect of x1 on y, right? Because again, if x1 and x2 are completely uncorrelated, then I'm not going to have a problem that when x1 moves, x2 moves, and this affects y. So these are the two conditions that guarantee that when we omit x2, we're not going to have a problem of inconsistency for estimating beta 1, right? Because in that case, the beta 1 from the short regression is going to be equal to the beta 1 from the long regression.